Hello everyone, this is Shen Thomas and uh, today we're going to talk about the 12 uh, basic tools uh, that we use in Wing Chun and uh, I'm going to show a simple drill where you can practice these tools by yourself so you can actually uh, become pretty good. Um, so anyway, the, the first tools kind of start off with on the center line in kind of a vertical way. So we start off with Jom Sao or Jom Sao which is a angled arm uh, that cuts down. Um, this can be used to cut down an arm that's grabbed you, but it can also be used to cut down any kind of attack that's coming towards you. It cuts it down, and then at the end of the cut down is a punch. So that's how it's utilized. Anyway, that's jump style. So, but we practice that with the palm and the the angle of the hand. So it's it's actually two angles: the angle of the elbow and how how that angles, and then how it elongates, and then also this angle of the hand. So when you put both of these angles together, then it becomes actually a very powerful tool at cutting down and jamming. So that's jump sow, jump sow. And then next we come up a little bit higher. And this is kind of a, a prodding tool, man sow. It's kind of a, a tool that kind of forces into the opponent to uh, cause them to react. Uh, it also um, has a kind of a cutting forward movement. So if somebody's arms are out there, uh, it cuts down, cuts down into them. Uh, and then this can cut from above, but then it can also cut from below. This tool can also be used uh, as a grab breakaway. Somebody grabs on, it allows you to shave them off. And the idea of this tool is not just to cut and then to punch, but to cut and then punch with the same tool. So that's why, again, we practice our punches in that three inch or that Bruce Lee one inch punch, right, is actually a three inch Wing Chun punch. And so the, these first three tools are Jom Sao, Man Sao, and then Bu Ji kind of turns to, uh, instead of a vertical, turns to a horizontal, and it shoots out. And you know, among Wing Chun practitioners, Bu Ji is, is mainly thought of, of as stabbing fingers, right? Jabbing fingers. When actually, you know, the, the real use of the tool is in this angle. This angle here. Um, it's used to intercept uh, any kind of punches coming towards the head. It's used to intercept. And then usually, after the intercept, then it's usually, it, it will flatten and jam the attack. Flatten and jam the attack and then move into like an attack towards the throat or after the flatten the jam then it becomes a punch right so that's buji so i practice these first three jump sao man sao and buji as we kind of go up on the center line and we come down then it changes as we change the level of height right so this allows us to get used to using these tools in kind of a repetitive manner, okay? And then the next three are the three basic tools of Wing Chun, which is Tan Sao. And again, it starts and it spirals forward. Tan Sao. And we can go from below or we can go from behind and flow forward. Okay, so again, Tan Sao, we have that angle of the hand, the arm, the triangle for its structural power. And then this angle of the hand actually helps trap whatever arm or whatever, whatever attacks coming towards us. You know, it actually helps lock it in. And so you'll see a lot of Wing Chun people, they do Tan Sao, but they do Tan Sao with a palm that's just kind of straight. And then they put that angle too low. If that angle's too low, there's no stopping power with that angle. So you need to have that angle high enough, uh, and then this hand has to cap the top of it. 
So it's much like when you see jujitsu and you see them get somebody in a hold and they'll actually kind of put their foot and, and like hook it and lock it. Well, Wing Chun's kind of doing the same thing with all of our tools is we have little hooks that are built in to each tool. See? And so Wing Chun's really intelligent that way with how it's using these hooks on the end of each tool because we don't have to reach out and have the timing and the speed to actually grab a punch which is pretty well impossible but when a punch comes and it and it's deflected uh, we're not trying to block we're just trying to go on the center line and, and deflect what's coming well then these hooks help stop and help uh, kind of pin down uh, what the attackers doing uh, the other idea is that we are so close in our distance that when somebody's throwing a punch and that, that tool blocks it, well, they can't get out of it unless they backtrack. Unless they backtrack enough, and when they do, we follow it in and we hit them. So the only other option they have is to step back and pull back. And then, of course, we follow them and, and run in and we keep that close distance. And so each one of these tools has a little hook on it and so you have tan sao which has the hook on it we have folk sao which is just like our punch right but it's got the little hook torn uh pointed towards the opponent and then we have bong sao which again is deflecting but to the outside right but if they want to try to cross that they can't because that hook that hook is there and you know whenever they try to move that hook they move the tool and then that kind of shows us, oh, we need to let that tool go, or we need to kind of change the direction. We need to let it collapse and let one tool transition into another tool. And so then that's really what single sticky and double sticky is about, is how to use the tools as forces coming in, and as that force changes and moves, how to actually change the tool with that and adapt uh, adapt to follow you know and of course we we only need to intercept and follow a movement enough to be able to find that opening you know and uh, what I've noticed a lot of other Wing Chun uh, do is they'll slap an attack away but then they'll not follow up on it and they'll go in but then they leave the attack out there and the attack could still punch you, right? So good Wing Chun always jams. <clears throat> it always uh, puts pressure on any attacking limb uh, and attacks at the same time without releasing that limb. And so when you see other Wing Chun and they're slapping hands and arms around away and they release it and then they say, oh, well then you can go straight in and hit that's not really true because as soon as they slap that arm down and release it and go to punch, well, that arm comes straight back, you know, uh, from somebody that's trained that knows what to do. So, uh, good Wing Chun, uh, make sure that no attacking limb has a chance to hit you. Uh, so then, again, that's why Wing Chun does like to uh, jam on the center line and if the opponent's really talented, really skilled, then we'll tend to uh, do some sort of um, almost like a, a blocking or a bouncing maneuver with like uh, some of our tools and then we'll get to the side. We'll get to the side where we have an opening. So we're not dealing with both of the opponent's arms, we're only dealing with one side. So that's why on the wooden dummy you always see them drop the bong sow in, in the center and then coming the ton sow on, on each side, dropping in the center and pivoting to the side. And of course, with a wooden dummy, it's more, you know, classical, this idea of, oh, I'm going to use ton sow and then hit him with a palm, where in real life it's going to be more of, of stepping in, jamming the a person's coming to attack after that jam. You're getting rid of that and then punching, hitting. Not so much of this, just palm to the midsection. Anyway, um, so back to the tools. Uh, the first three we have Jom Sao, Man Sao, and Buji. The second set of three is Tan Sao, Tan Sao, Bong Sao. 
and that can be done over or under. And then we have folk sow, and folk sow comes out, and it can be from underneath or from above. Now folk sow uses the same arm as our punch, where our, our arm is turned vertical with the bones, the same as our punch, but it's got a horizontal hook. You know, so you see that in Sunim Tao, right, how we use it, and a lot of people, they see that folk sow, and they're like, well, what can that even be used for? They, they don't even understand. They just think, well, maybe in sticky hands, it's just a way to kind of hook and kind of follow and, and guide and, and uh, uh, kind of use it as more of a bridge, bridging, sticking, bridging. Well, uh, folk sow is very effective on its own as a striking tool. And so when it comes forward, it's much like a piston. The elbow follows the inside of the, the pathway of the chest, and it comes straight up forward. And so, you know, you have a lot of boxers that are like, oh yeah, when you box, you got to keep your chin down. Keep your chin down, and nobody can hit you in the throat. Well, yeah, they might not be able to punch in the throat, but any, any movement using the forearm, like our folk sow, or like our bougie, anything that uses that angle of the forearm can easily come up through that, even though the chin is locked down, can easily penetrate that. Uh, so that's, again, why it's used instead of a punch to the throat. So you got Buji, uh, and again, uh, Folk Sal is the other one. Now Folk Sal also, when it comes forward, its main use is this part of the wrist, and then that is used uh, alongside the jaw. So it's very, very powerful alongside the jaw. And then when you hit the jaw, then it releases and comes around and hooks. So it's very much like, you know, the, the hook when a fish bites the hook and then it comes back and that hook locks in. Well, the same thing with folk sow is when you hit somebody in the, in the jaw, then it relaxes and the hand comes around and then you got the back of the neck in one move, in one move. So it's not even two moves it's just one and then you're able to pull that face into an elbow strike you know bring it together uh, and then again uh, after something like that you know you might hit them they'll struggle well they'll try to hit or punch back especially where we're open well that's why the next tool is always coming down to a consult to uh, create that elbow blocking um, maneuver so uh, most of our tools, if, if they do go out straight, uh, then there's this idea that you can be attacked, you know, up here. So then the tool itself can turn like bong sao and protect that, or turn and extend and protect it further uh, from an upward strike. But then now that we've protected against an upward strike, well now the, the opponent's gonna attack the lower strike. So that's why it comes back down and it's not so much the idea of, of we're just turning the tool but it's the idea of whatever's open then we close with the elbow and so then that protects so meanwhile at the end of our tool we can be striking so we can actually be striking and protecting at the same time and that's the main difference between punching in a lot of other styles you know how they're punching is they're leaving this wide open or even if, if a punch comes straight up kind of on the inside of, of my own punch into my face right well with Wing Chun that is closed and, and locked off so we're actually punching but we're actually shielding uh, that center line that part of our body as we're punching and so when we're using both hands then the shield extends from here down to here and so we've we've got our basically our whole body kind of protected there and then if they go oh, I want to go on this side well then that's shielded as the hand comes down Let's see so again it only leaves this upper area and then that's what we have the transition for with the different tools like uh, if we do a kind of a high bong sow which can happen we can do a high bong sow and then extend it right into them or we can do a buji, a buji attack. There's also lot sow or a fox sow, fox sow. 
um, and and so various uh, various uh, tools that help protect this this upper upper part of the body. Um, now Wing Chun, when it was developed, uh, it was fighting martial arts where people were getting really low in the stances. A lot of kung fu, you get really low in the stances, and so the highest punch was maybe chest level from these attacks, you know, and then it would maybe angle towards the face. And so that's why even a low bong style would work very well against it. Uh, nowadays, you know, you have Western boxing, so Wing Chun has to be kind of adapted upwards. Uh, the tools have to be adapt adapted upwards to help protect the head, since that's you know the the main the main goal of Western fighters is well we wanna we wanna break the face we wanna do a knockout punch you know uh, so uh, anyway that's just a couple of the tools and some various things and uh, so we'll see you next time. <laughs>